recording this meeting and we will be sharing the recording with everybody um, so you can cascade your training to your team members or if you want to refer to it in the future. Um, also, if you want um, to type any questions or if you have any comments, please feel free to make those comments in the chat box. Um, if you have any questions when somebody is speaking, please kindly write your comments in there as well and we will address it during the webinar. Also, um, anybody who's on social media, we invite you to um, use the hashtags that you see on the screen for Girls Inspire and Ending Child Marriage um, on your Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, or any other social media platforms that you use, and kindly share and retweet, and also um, spread the word on what we're doing about blogging for social change. So without for any further ado, I'd like to hand over the microphone to Mrs. Frances Ferreira who is a senior advisor for women and girls and the team leader for education at the Commonwealth of Learning to make the opening remarks. Thank you, Cherise. Good morning, everybody, and good evening, wherever you are across the world. And thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'm pleased to welcome our host, Ms. Sarah McGowan, who is our communications manager uh, here at the Commonwealth of Learning. Uh, she has a wide range of experience uh, in communications and journalism, and over the past 10 years or so, Sparrow worked with NGOs and nonprofits here in Canada as well as abroad. With her background, Sparrow is indeed best placed to lead our discussion this morning uh, during this webinar, which we have entitled Blogging for Social Change. And as you may know, social change refers to any significant alteration over time in behavior patterns, cultural values, and norms. And it can be controversial. The issue that we want to change uh, through our work here at the Commonwealth of Learning, and specifically with Girls Inspire, um, is to end the cycle of child early and forced marriage. Uh, those of you who have joined may be with us um, on this road to change this. Uh, some of you may have something else that you would like to change within the society that you are. And we know that social change can be very controversial. Um, so one has to be careful with your approach. You have to be careful with your words and you have to be careful about the audience um, that you also target with your words. And for this reason, um, we have different approaches. Uh, blogging is one of them, and that is why we invited um, somebody who has some authority in this area on communications in journalism to speak to us about this issue. So with that, I hope you enjoy this webinar. Please feel free to get actively involved um, I hand over to Sparrow, uh, and I'm also looking forward to listen to, to you, Sparrow, and I'm really looking forward to after the webinar to see how people are going to use uh, the information that you will share with us in making that change in society. Over to you, Sparrow. Thank you. Good morning and good evening, everyone. Um, I'm very happy to be here, and thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to get started, I think. We'll jump right in and we'll talk about what we're going to be discussing today. Um, a quick overview of what I plan to cover in the presentation aspect. We're going to talk about how blogging can benefit our work, um, the elements of a good blog, choosing a blog format, planning your blog. And I hope by the end of the webinar you will leave feeling confident and prepared to create your next blog. And we will also have a fun blogging challenge and some time for questions and comments and discussion at the end. So I know some of you may be new to blogging, while others may already blog somewhat yourselves. Hopefully we will be able to cover something for everyone. I should also note, before we go in, that there are many types of blogs. Some are more news-based. Others are kind of the top five lists that um, you might be familiar with. Even top five ways to blog would be one. The ideas and suggestions that we'll be discussing today were chosen because they relate to the type of blogging that's more in line with the Girls Inspire blog and the community of practice. So let's get started. Why blog? Blogging can benefit global development and social change work in a number of ways. Firstly, it allows us to spread awareness about the work we're doing 
in a way that can be personal and engaging. This can, in turn, help others be better informed about the issues or challenges that we are trying to address. It can also allow people to get involved by supporting the work in whatever way is possible for them, from volunteering to helping us further spread awareness via social media, or even just telling their friends and family. Blogging allows us to highlight our successes and the successes of those we work with. Others are able to see the positive change that is happening, which can inspire them to also get involved. And with the kind of work that many of us do, it can sometimes feel like progress is slow. Blogging can even encourage us to focus on our own successes ourselves and keep us inspired and encouraged to keep moving forward. In the Girls Inspire community of practice, there is a focus on learning, sharing, and connecting. Blog posts can allow us to share our experiences. These experiences may also reflect a similar challenge that someone else is having and provide insight into a new way to address it. It allows us to connect with others. Blogs are actually not meant to be just one-way communication. They're meant to be the starting point of a conversation. We can comment on each other and have discussions about information or Blogs allow us to highlight the people involved in our work, whether it's the individuals or communities who participate in our programs, or the staff members who manage them. Sometimes development and social change work can get lost in the numbers and the results achieved, but when it comes down to it, our work is really about people, and this is one way to show that. So we'll get into the, the bones of blogging and what are the basic elements of a good blog. In the webinar invite, I asked you to think about a story someone recently told you that you couldn't wait to tell someone else, to think about why you found that story so interesting and what made you think someone else would want to hear about it. The reason I asked you to do that is because blogging is essentially storytelling. <laughs> the great thing about storytelling is that it's universal to every country and culture. We tell stories all the time, whether it's something that our child did or something that we read about. And most stories rely on a few basic components that we can think of when writing a blog. The first is characters. Who are the people involved? Most stories involve a person or a group of people, maybe an organization. While you might still want to share numbers or information, it can make the story more interesting if you can show the people that those numbers relate to. Introduce the person or people involved in the story you are telling. The second component is the setting. Where does the story take place? Tell us a little bit about the location or environment in which this story takes place. This can be as broad as telling a bit about the national context of the story, or as specific as describing the room the story takes place in. The third is plot. What happened? What are the people doing? Why are they doing it? What is the challenge that is being solved? What has changed? Think about almost any movie or play you might have seen or a book you've read. Something almost always changes from the beginning to the end. You can show this in your blog in a very simple way. You can start by describing the situation before, then say what happened to affect that situation, and then describe how the situation is different to the way it was at the start. And the final element is theme. How does this relate to bigger efforts? If you're talking about one person in a program, are there other people like that person? How many people participate in the program? How does this relate to efforts to end, relate to efforts to end child early and forced marriage? All of these elements combine to tell the story, or in our case, the blog. Now you don't need to check off each element of character, setting, plot, theme, every time you write a blog. But when you've finished, writing that blog, it can be useful to go back and reread it and ask yourself, have I thought about where this story takes place? Have I talked about how this story relates to our work? Should I? The answer might, might not always be yes. You don't want to include everything in one blog, but it's often good to at least consider these questions when you're writing to see that you've portrayed the story as best as you could and gotten your message across as best as you also, if you feel stuck in writing about something, you can pick one of these elements and start with that. Perhaps you have an event to write about, and you don't know where to start. You can start with a person or a group of people who were there. Or you could describe where the story took place. Sometimes it helps you get past that 
kind of what they refer to often as writer's block, and then you can move through the story from there. In addition to the basic elements of story, there are a few approaches to writing your blog that can help make it easier for you, and it can make it more engaging for the people reading it. There's a list of tips that we have here, and we just picked four. It could be quite long, but I picked a few that stand out, and I think at the end of the presentation, it would be great if you could share any that you might have as well. Defining a goal for your blog can help make the writing come more easily and make the story clearer to the reader. To decide on a goal, think about what would be the most important thing you want the reader to remember or to do after they've read the blog. Do you want them to just know about the program or the organization? Do you want to know that something new has happened in it? Do you want them to share the story on social media? Or do you want them maybe to contribute ideas in the comments to your blog? Make sure to address that specifically in the blog, and that way it is clear for the, writer, the reader what you're trying to achieve. Write in your own voice. You don't need to make them feel that this, don't feel that the blog needs to be a news article. While blogs can be professional, they can also be fairly informal. And I think it's great when the, the writer's voice comes across in the blog. Keep it simple. Don't try to do too much in one blog. Stick to that goal you set earlier. And if there's another story you want to tell, you can always write another blog. And make it as, only as long as it needs to be. Don't feel the need to add more just to make the blog longer. When it comes to blogs, shorter is often better. And that way you get one story across and something that someone can remember. Now, up until now, I've mainly referred to people reading or writing a blog. While written blogs are a great option, you don't need to limit yourself. Blogs can be created in many different formats. For example, if you have the resources and the bandwidth, videos are a great option. A phone with video capabilities can often help you create simple, engaging videos. You could do a short interview with someone. If you aren't able to capture audio with your phone or camera, you could just take video of an event or activity and then add some text in the blog to explain it. You could also do a photo-based blog, similar to the photo essay about the solar panel boats that is on the Girls Inspire blog now. And a blog can even be art. Perhaps a drawing or similar, such as the one created by Kuntel. Feel as you can see, it's quite creative, so feel free to embrace your creativity, but don't feel the need um, to do something that's elaborate if it's not within your skill set. If you're new to blogging your video, I would suggest keeping it simple. A short video interview filmed with a phone, or perhaps a few photos with a short description of who or what is in the pictures. And the story of written words still makes a great blog post. So now we move to the planning aspect of the blog post. For some of you, blogging might be part of your job or something extra to your job. Either way, planning will make it faster and easier. Before starting your blog, take the time to think about who or what the story is about. Maybe you have an event or you're going to visit someone that you think has a good story to tell. You'll need to decide what form of blog you want to create. Are you going to write the blog or use video? Video tends to take more time depending on your experience with it, so keep that in mind when making decisions about how you want to present your story. One note about video blog posts is a steady camera makes all the difference. You can still hold the camera, but if you have access to a tripod or even a table that you can set it on, it makes the picture quality much better. If you're telling someone else's story, it's important to have their consent to do so. Similarly, it's important to have their consent that you can take their picture and post it on the blog. For Girls Inspire, there are a couple of links that are important to read as well, the community guidelines and the privacy policy, both linked at the bottom of the Girls Inspire website. And ask for support. Ask a coworker to read something you've written to check that, is, to check that what you're trying to communicate is what you want to be communicating, or even just to proofread it for you if you're feeling maybe you've been looking at it for too long. You can even ask the Girls Inspire community for their input. And finally, don't overthink it. Think about that story that you recent that I we talked about or that I asked you to think about earlier. Um, did you plan that for days? Did you sit down and toil over whether or not you were getting the, it exactly how you wanted to? You just told the story and you told it naturally, and that works in the blog format quite well. You just keep it simple and explain where you think people might not understand or might not have the context for which to understand it.
getting checked out. Okay, so for the blog challenge, um, to get you started, we have a blog challenge for the Girls Inspire partners mainly. Uh, we will launch at the community practice as well for those who couldn't join us today. We're asking everyone to contribute to a group blog post. If possible, send us one or more short video clips, ideally less than 20 seconds each, asking the women and girls you work with one question. What is your favorite thing that you've learned so far in the program? If you're unable to send a video, a photo, a photo or a very short quote of the, the woman or girl's answer would also be wonderful. Or even just a quote and a name if you would prefer to send something written. We will make a video compiling the different submissions to share on the blog. And then finally, on how to submit a blog on the Girls Inspire community of practice. Um, if you just visit the website, and go to the blog page, you'll see right at the top, submitting a blog post and managing your blog submissions. And you can always ask questions. I'm sure Cherise would be happy to answer them for you if you have them along the way. And if you have any questions just about blogging and making decisions about what to blog, I'm always happy to answer as well. I'm on the community of practice, and you'll find me under Sparrow McGowan. Thank you so much, Sparrow. And if I may jump in here for a second, I want to show everybody where you can find the screen that you see at the moment. So if we were to go on to... Sorry about that, everybody. So if we were to go on to the community of practice, which you can see in here, on this screen. So I'll start from the home page of the community of practice so you can see where you can find the link where you can submit a blog post. So you'll see on the home page right here on the girlsinspire.org site, you can scroll down to hover over Girls Inspire in Action and click on blog. And at the very top, you'll be able to see a link to submit a blog post and manage your blog submissions. So once you're logged in, and if you don't have an account just yet, um, we welcome you to register, which you can find at the very top right of the page, where you see my name at the moment. If you're logged out, you'll be able to see a, a link to register. Um, and you can click on this link to submit a blog post. And you'll be invited to enter in the information that Sparrow was just talking about, which is the focus of your blog post, which is a title here, um, the text or the photos and the videos that you'd like to upload, which you'll see right here in this area. The category, so this will be um, a drop-down menu. So if it's a story about a girl um, that you're supporting in the community, you can choose it. It's a real story. If it's a story about a community that you're working in or um, a news or an event that you'd like to share with us, you can choose that category there. You can also type in the tags that is relevant to that specific blog post. For example, if it's child marriage, you can simply type, type child marriage here. Um, or you can type, if it's something to do with skills development, you can do that as well. You can upload an image, um, which is get, going to be the featured image that you'll see on the blog post. So you can click on this, and um, you'll be invited to upload a file or select from a current media library on the community of practice. Um, one moment.
Hi there, is anybody able to hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, thank you very much, Mevish. Sorry about that. So I'll repeat um, what I've said and then back into the community of practice. So I'll go back to the homepage and just take you back, um, just in case um, nobody was able to hear me while I was making this presentation. Um, so we're on the homepage of girlsinspire.org, so you'll be able to see here um, the community of practice. And if you hover over Girls Inspire in Action, you'll be able to press on blog here to the right. And here, um, once you're logged in, you can submit a blog post. So you can click on this link. And this is um, what I was referring to earlier, that you can, you'll, you'll be invited to enter in the text that Sparrow was talking about earlier, um, the focus of your blog. So you can put in the title there. Um, you'll be invited to enter in the text or any kind of media format that you'd like. So you can post some pictures here, some, add some links and the stories that you'd like to add. Um, also down here, you'll be able to choose if, for example, if it's a story about a girl or a community that you're working with, you can choose that it's a real story. Or if you'd like to share an event or a news with us, you can choose that as well. With the tags, this will enable us to label what kind of blog and what topics you're covering in this particular blog. So for example, if it's, about, if it's a story about child marriage, you can type that in here. Um, if it's a story about skills development, you can type that in here as well, or skills training. Um, you also have the option to choose a featured image. So you'll be invited to upload a file here from your computer, choose from our current media library on the Girls Inspire homepage. And you can submit your blog post here on the button to the right. So um, going back here, so once you've submitted your blog, you will have the option to manage your blogs. For example, you need to make an edit to a blog or you need to add another photo or anything that you'd like, you can click on this link and do so. So once you have live blogs, you can see them listed in here. And also if you have a pending post, you can see it listed in here, in this button on, on here. Um, what will happen once you submit a blog is that we will receive it um, here in our office and we'll approve it, and the following day you should be able to see it. Um, if we have any questions on the blog, we'll come to you directly, but you should be able to see it published by the following day or within the week. Um, does anybody have any questions? I'll stop there for a minute to take any questions or comments. Uh, from my side, I just want to thank Sparrow and Cherise for the presentation. Um, but uh, as Cherise has asked, is anybody having a question? So maybe uh, you can unmute your, your speaker and then talk to all of us so that everybody can hear the question. If you have specific questions for Sparrow in regard to her presentation, or to Cherise, uh, kindly do so. We have another, I think, 22 minutes left. Uh, hello, I just need a clarification. Is there any difference between a blog and a story? Um, not really, no. Um, so a blog is just a serialized stories really so they can be blogs can be news so there can be a slight element but everything should have a sort of story part to it so you're telling a story story is a very general word to use and so I think that if you just think of it as a story or that and that story can somehow be portrayed through photos or portrayed through video or it's just a news item it's kind of it's pretty much the same thing um, so there's another question from Mustafa from Bangladesh Open University. Um, Mustafa, would you like to unmute your phone and let us know, um, say your question for us? Well, 
need to discuss these guys there, right? Okay, so I'll read out yeah. Mustafa's question in case I, no, um, not everybody oh, okay. that bot. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, actually, I am uh, uh, trying to tell that uh, when we write a blog, so should we consider the audience? Because, uh, for example, if we uh, write the blogs regarding Gus, so what are the target audience we want to connect with? So should we consider that? If you consider that, maybe uh, the format and uh, other things will be a little bit uh, specific. I don't know. So that's why this is my curiosity or, or my question that is it uh, uh, the, the, the design of the blog uh, uh, varies uh, uh, with the context of the audience or not? Uh, definitely. And I think generally um, you would adapt depending on um, how best to tell the story to a specific audience. For the Girls Inspire blog post, it kind of has a number of different audiences. So you can choose who you're speaking to when you write your blog post. So are you writing a blog post that's mainly for the community of practice and do you want to engage with them? And just be clear, when you're writing the blog post, just be clear about for yourself who you're talking to. And you can even be very clear in the blog post itself if you think it would help the reader. Um, there's also, the Girls Inspire website is public and to keep in mind as well that the public can read that post and that that is something that you might want to consider in terms of privacy policy and community of practice. Speaking about um, privacy policy and community guidelines that Sparrow had referred to um, during her presentation, I'd like to take us back to the Girls Inspire Community of Practice and just bear with me for one second. And I want to quickly show you where you can locate the privacy policy and the community guidelines for your reference. And this is also work in progress, so if you have any feedback on it, let, let us know. So while Sharice is opening the page, uh, there's another question from Sajida. Uh, do you want to take that, Sparrow? Sure, and I think how many blog posts that you can post is as many as you think you can write or create. Um, the more that's in there, the more that people can engage with each other. Excellent. Sharice will take that question from Mustafa in what she's going to show you now on the page. Okay, so you see the community of practice right here on your screen. And if you were to scroll down to the bottom of the community of practice, you'll be able to see some links here at the very bottom, right below um, the Creative Commons um, Attribution Share Alike 4.0 um, disclaimer here. You'll be able to see the community guidelines and the privacy policies. So I'll just click on community guidelines here. And this is just an overview. Feel free to read through it on your own time. This is just an overview of what the mandate is of the Girls Inspire community of practice, which is networking, knowledge sharing, capacity building, learning from each other, and to respect that mandate, basically. So um, we're putting in some guidelines here just so that everybody's voices can be respected on the community of practice and to not um, have anybody feel that their voices are deterred or not respected. So that is the main purpose of the community, of guide, uh, community guidelines. The privacy policy, you also see a link right next to community, of, community guidelines. So you can click on that. And this just gives you an overview of what happens to what you post um, and the content that you post and the content that you engage in. For example, if you make a comment, what happens to that? So what we're saying here is that um, in terms of your privacy, the community of practice is a closed group. This is this um, community of practice is owned by the Commonwealth of Learning. So we try we have followed protocols to ensure that um, your privacy is well protected. Um, also, if we decide to use um, the comments in the community of practice for any reason, such as reporting and providing evidence of the work that we do. Um, we will go to you directly to, um, to seek that um, permission and advice. So um, this is just for you to have a look at um, when, when you have your own time and, and a few minutes to go through. Um, and I'll stop there for any questions or comments. Mustafa has another question. He's asking whether there's a schedule uh, or can we post any time. Uh, and he's also happy that we have the CC 
4.0 license. Um, anyone uh, wants to go? <laughs> well, I think for scheduling, you can post any time, and then it goes into pe pending, and then it's approved for posting. Um, so I think often and as much as you want, really, would be fantastic. Thank you, Sparrow. Yes, I would definitely agree with Sparrow's recommendation as often as you can. And as I've said, uh, this is blogging for social change. So there is a specific, and Sparrow also said, it's a, it's a series of stories. So if you, if you, for instance, have a story uh, to tell about how a change happened within that community, um, in whatever it is that you want to change, I'm conscious of the fact that there is uh, some other people uh, in the webinar who are not necessarily uh, part of our Girls Inspire uh, agenda and may want to change something there at the university or there in the student community. Um, so if there is something that you want to change, if there is something, you will have a series of stories, your blogs, that you will tell. And as Farrow has said, either through videos or through pictures or through writing, um, it is important uh, to note that, uh, as, as, as uh, Sparrow said, you can do it any time, as, as, as many times as you want to. So social change doesn't just happen. Things that we are doing today may only have an impact in many years from today. So we should post as many as possible. Uh, we should tell the story so that people can look forward. Oh, uh, Mustafa or Kuntal or Sajida wrote a story, a blog last week, uh, and this is going to continue. So I'm looking forward to read another blog of this person. Uh, another thing that, that we have tried to, to address, and it is not perfect, and we will still put a disclaimer on this issue, is about making sure, Mustafa talked about the, the audience, is to make sure that our audience can also read the stories. We know English is not uh, the language of everybody uh, around the world. There's different languages. So conscious of that, we have this uh, selected language. So if somebody wants to read your blog in another language, like in Bengali or in Urdu, there is a, a, a drop-down button there on top. Um, we are working now in making it more visible for people to notice it immediately uh, so that they can translate it in the local language. And you will know, this is the Google Translate, this is the best that we have at the moment. We will still put a disclaimer there to say it is not always perfect. Uh, but I translated it in my own mother tongue and I found that it is 90% um, at least the true story in the translation. So you may want to know that also, and so if you encourage your community where you work to read your story and they say, I don't understand English, you can advise them, well, you can read it in, in the local language. We have made it more um, visible on one of our pages at our, on our theory of change and Cherise, uh, who is the custodian of this page. She's still working on, on making it more visible, but it is important. Um, that we we make sure that we reach out as far as we can. I'll stop there. Does anybody else have any comments or questions? I'd also like to invite any comments on the blog challenge that Sparrow had put forward. I think this is an exciting initiative that could um, Ra um, help us raise awareness on Girls Inspire as well and the work that you do in the communities. Maybe we can also ask Kevin uh, if he has something specific or was he just interested in um, blogging or is it something that he wants to share with us that he's focusing on and maybe we can also help. Or is he becoming one of our supporters here to help us in making the change in society? Sorry to put you on the spot, Kevin, but I'm just interested also. Uh, and we also see uh, Benita's comment about Kuntal. Uh, yes, uh, we have his artwork in which he's doing his blog, so we will share that um, 
with the community here too. Any more questions to Sparrow? At the moment, um, I'd like to invite maybe Fatima from Spark because she's the one who was um, who was willing to test the blog feature for us, and she had actually posted a blog a week ago. So, Fatima, um, what do you think so far about writing your own blog and posting it on the community of practice? Anything? Any lessons learned or best practices that you'd like to share with the group? Hi, hello everybody. Um, it was a great experience, and I I I, uh, I even attached the uh, I I wanted to attach pictures with it because uh, they have they they make more impressions. But um, if is there a way that you can edit it now? Because right now it's without any picture, and it looks very dull. So is there a picture? Is there a way that you can put out any picture to it? Yeah, so we can add that. I know that you sent me a picture for blurring, um, for privacy reasons, um, for the girls that we're yeah. in, the, in the story. So we're working on that with our designer, and we will post that up with you. But also in... So if we have such privacy issues, can we just take pictures of Google? Yes. Or do we have to cite that? So um, if you decide to um, search a photo on Google, you can do that. Um, while we have you all, we can, I can show you quickly something that you can see on Google. You have the option to choose photos that are open for reuse. Um, okay. So bear with me for a moment. And that is a great question, actually. I think it's important that you rather use that option than you use people's pictures that you can make permission for you. So if you were to go into Google Images and drop down to search tools, you can see the usage rights here. So you can filter um, what is labeled for reuse or labeled for reuse with modification. So you can choose here and type in um, what you're trying to look for. For example, let's try skills development and see all the pictures that are available for reuse or child marriage, for example. And so you can choose these photos. And when you do, um, we still encourage you, even though it's labeled for reuse, we encourage you to, um, to cite the source. And you can put that as a text in the blog that you submit. And you can link to it. As okay, that's perfect. Sabine, we've just seen your comment, and we, we're glad that you, you've got your audio. Do you have any comments or, um, that you'd like to share with us? Okay. It seems like Sabine couldn't hear us very well. Um, but I'd like to thank Fatima for sharing her experiences with posting, and that was a great question um, to give us a chance to share with everybody how to search for images on Google um, if they do have any privacy issues with the photos that they'd like to use. Okay, so Mustafa has raised a question. Can we have the scope identified for the community of practice? It may help us choose the topic. This is a very good question, and I'd like to pass it on to Francis. Thank you, Sharice. Thank you, Mustafa, for that question. Uh, as I've mentioned right in the beginning, our focus is uh, child ending the cycle of child early and forced marriage, CEFM. So the focus is really to blog about stories uh, that lead to change in this regard. So blog about stories about girls who, who, who started skills training, girls who started schools. Uh, blog about community members 
who made a paradigm shift from the traditional, my daughter has to get married uh, as soon as she's reached uh, uh, adolescence. Uh, now this community member says, no, after I've been visited by SPARC or by the Dari or by CMES or by whichever uh, ADPP in Mozambique, after uh, I've been visited by them, now I've changed my mind, so I really want my daughter to go to school. Those positive stories of change that happen, um, of, or a girl who says, no, I, I have to, to listen to my parents, but I will convince them not for me to get married. Such stories are the stories that we want you to blog about. Uh, we know there are many negative stories around this theme. Uh, I would like to encourage you to focus on the positive part of the story. Uh, the one that, um, who was it that just spoke of Fatima? Fatima? That Fatima just referred to about the picture that she saw. That story is a very sad story, but it had a very positive turn in the end uh, when this girl started her training, uh, her skills training with one of, at one of their centers. So Mustafa and everybody, the focus is really to focus is really positive stories about change in regard to this theme. And so we have a question from Sabine. Can we have a simple list of to do's um, and don'ts of blog posts? Um, before I hand over to Sparrow, I'd like to let everybody know that we will be sharing the recording of this webinar as well as the PowerPoint to everybody who's attended, um, so you can refer to the notes here. But also in terms of the do's and don'ts and top tips, I'll pass it on to Sparrow. So what I will do is put together just from the presentation maybe a one-page sheet of kind of the get yeah, all the top tips and the um, guidelines and just ways to help you blog. So you have something that's next to you when you're sitting down to write your blog. Thank you, Sparrow. Um, Mevish, I see that you've made a comment about getting to know the background of the screenshots of the presentation. Um, we will share the recording. Can you clarify um, what you'd like to understand more? Um, I think I think if I read you correct, my patient correct me if I'm misunderstanding this, uh, is that you have seen the, the screenshots, uh, but you didn't go into it or you didn't follow how to go into it. So when Cherie sends you the link, uh, if you can follow the, the webinar, the audio again and look at the pictures, and if you have a specific the links that she shows to or to the, the community of practice I meant. And if you have specific questions now as to the things you want to understand, can you mention that now so that Cherise can focus on that when she sent you a response? Matish? know the background of the screenshots. Could be that you can hear us the whole time so you just watch the presentation. Okay. And also I'm as as usual our team is always open to questions. So if you have any questions about submitting a blog or um, the privacy policy or community guidelines that we shared with you in the community of practice, feel free to send us an email and we'll ha we're happy to guide you through this. And also um you know your first blog post may be the one that you'll have more questions on as it's your first time. So we're happy to be on hand to assist Sparrow, Francis, Jasmine, and I. So don't be shy to shoot us an email with any questions that you may have, and we'll give you the best support that we can so you can develop and post your first blog post. Mustafa, I think you've raised a very good question. He says, is it possible to add any forum on the blog site so that we can share or get help while facing and designing any blog? I think that is a great question. Um, we welcome everybody who isn't yet a member on the community of practice to register. So you'll see the registration button at the top right of the community of practice. 
um, and you'll submit your information and we'll process the request and you'll be able to access the community of practice. And within that, you can join the group discussions. And I invite you to start this discussion and encourage everybody here to engage in this discussion about what questions you have about blogging or any tips that you have about blogging for those who have blogged before. So um, I'll quickly show you, we have about a few minutes left. I'll quickly show you um, where I mean on the community of practice. So you see here at the top right is my name, but if I were to log out, um, you'll be able to see a button to register. It'll just take a few seconds. So you can click here to register, and once you register, you'll be able to have an account. Let me just put this back into English. And while I'm logging in, I see that there's a question from Sabine. Can you edit our blog post? Um, Sabine, that's a good question. So what happens is that when you submit a blog, it goes into our office here, into the main account. And so we'll be able to see your blog here. Um, so we'll just, we'll just have a look at the blog and see if it's aligned to what we're trying to achieve with Girls Inspire. And um, post that blog, and you'll be able to see it published the next day. So if we have any questions directly or if we have any um, suggestions on how to improve this blog so that you can take those tips for the future, we'll work with you directly before we submit, we, we post that blog. Or if you have any, if you'd like to send us an email to um, ask for suggestions or questions before you, before we publish that blog, please feel free to do so as well. I just want to add to that, uh, Sabine, you, you did not have audio at that time when Cherise took uh, people through the site, uh, but you will see it in the, the recording of the webinar when you access it later. Uh, that she has shown where you should manage your blog, and that is where the edit uh, function is. Uh, when you post the blog, sometimes you will see under the blog also it tells you you have some time to edit it. So that feature is definitely there. Uh, Mustafa, in regard to that, Cherise has answered you, but you should feel free if you if anybody doesn't have um, doesn't feel comfortable to ask where everybody can read. You can inbox uh, any of us on uh, the community of practice uh, about the challenges you have in regard to uh, blogging. Uh, over to Sharice, she's ready now. So I just wanted to um, uh, address that question from Mustafa further. So once you've registered and once you have an account on the community of practice, you'll be able to have access to the community if you hover over community here and go down to groups. You'll be able to see all of the groups here that you're a member of. So for example, if you're writing from Bangladesh, you'll be a member of the Bangladesh group. If you're a part of the Center for Mass Education and Science, you'll be, able, you'll be a part of that group. But everybody who's a member will be a member of the global group. And this is Mustafa, where you, you could post um, and start a discussion forum. If you click on forum here, you can start a discussion forum on blogging, and you can invite others on this webinar and beyond who are other members of, on the community of practice um, to, to make comments and share their tips and best practices on blogging. So given that we are at night, um, just hitting the one hour mark, um, if you have any more questions, again, please feel free to email us. But for now, I'll hand over to Francis to make the closing remark. Thank you, Cherise. Uh, thank you so much, everybody who has uh, signed up for this webinar and who participated. Uh, let me start by, first of all, apologizing for uh, the technology that uh, I think at some stages 
maybe tailed out. Uh, unfortunately, the only way to test this is when we are live, uh, because otherwise we have to ask you all to come half an hour ahead of time for us to, to check it all out. Um, so bear with us as we go through this process. Uh, I want to give a special thanks to uh, Sparrow for the time that she has put in um, to prepare for this webinar. Uh, although she's the communications manager, this is not really her job to do things like this. And we are indeed very privileged that she could make time for us to share her experience and expertise with all of us. I've also learned a lot. Uh, I'm now really looking forward, and that is how we will show our gratitude to our host, Kate, to the blogs that will come because of this uh, webinar. So I'm looking forward to read all your blogs. Uh, as Sharice said, and Sparrow also alluded to it, uh, your blog will not automatically go live after you submitted it. It will come to us and we will have a quick look at it and then it will be posted. So if you need any advice after you have written the blog, there is still time for you also to write to us and alert us to that. Um, and most of the time, the reason why we we do this is because of uh, the guidelines, the privacy policy, and for us to ensure that whatever goes out, uh, although it is your own story, that it doesn't uh, offend anybody on um, this platform. Um, thank you so much for your time. I know it's quite late, and because of Ramadan, some of you are maybe already uh, looking forward to rest before you start your prayers early in the morning again. So thank you for your time, we really appreciate it. Um, I'm working on a project uh, that I want to present at our Pen Commonwealth Forum later this year on how we develop a vibrant online community. And I'll get back to some of you, especially when I've seen some of your comments and the questions. It will also show how you evolve in using this type of technology. So I'm very excited. Thank you so much, and uh, good evening, wherever you are. Thank you also to Cherise. I'm so sorry. I should have said that first for all the arrangements she has made and all her patience uh, with us. We appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.